In this lecture, we will learn about the POST request. Basically, POST is an HTTP method in which we can send loads of data to the server and the data that is sent to the server is stored in the request body of the server which means the data that is sent in POST will not be visible in the URL unlike GET call. As you see in these links, we have GET request where the data is visible and you see in the POST that URL doesn't contain any data. This type of request is generally used in web forms to create or update data. I'm sure some of you might have a question, why can't we use GET requests instead of POST to create data? When talking about GET requests, we have the limitation of the URL length and to create any resource on server or insert data in a database, we need to send lots of information and sometimes very sensitive data which actually should not be visible in the URL. Whereas POST data can transmit lots of data with different data types in the form of a request body. Also the POST method is secured as the requests are not cached in the browser history. So does that mean we cannot use the request body in GET request? Of course you can, but that is not according to the RFC guidelines, that is RFC 7231. You can check this link to know more about few standards. Alright, so let's begin. Let me first install the prerequisites for creating a node server. I am going to install Express. After this is installed, creating an index.js file. And in that I'll say const express is equal to require express. After express I'll say const app equals express function. I'm also creating a variable port equals 5000. And then finally I will say App dot listen parentheses port comma arrow function and console log node server started on the respective port. Let's save and run the server. I'll say nodemon index.js. Now let's write our very first post method. Syntax is the same what we have for creating a get method. The only difference is Instead of get, we will use post. I'll say app dot post parentheses and the endpoint that is test slash create and then the rest of the syntax remain the same. That is request comma response arrow function and curly brackets. Now here we will write the code to insert data in database. For now, let me just return some response. I'll say response dot send and let's display a message that post call executed. Let's save the file and let's try to execute this API in the browser URL and let's see what happens. Here I'm writing the API URL that is localhost 5000 slash test slash create enter. And what's this? It says cannot get the URL. This means the post call cannot be executed directly in the browser and now that's where we will be using a fake client that is postman in our case to test the API. Let's open the postman. I am creating a new collection here naming it crud example. Adding a request. I'll name it post example. Here I am selecting the type of method that is post and let me write the URL localhost colon 5000 test create. Now let's click on send and here is the response post call executed. Perfect. But this is not why we have created post API. We have created the post API so that we can insert the data in the database. And to do so, first we need to pass some data with this URL. 
basically we will pass the data in the form of JSON in the body of the request. So here in the postman I will select body and then I will select raw and from this drop down I am selecting JSON. Perfect. And now I am creating a JSON structure here that is key value pair. I'll start with curly brackets because we are creating a JSON object and then I'm going to add some key value pair like title Godfather, release date, let's say 72, September 27, rating 4.8. Let's save this. So now we have passed the data in the body of request. Next is we need to capture this information in the API to process it further. And how do we do that? Basically the information which is passed in the URL in the form of request body, we can retrieve it using request.body method in the API. So here in the API I will say response.send request.body that is whatever information is sent in the API we are sending the same information back as response. Let me also keep one console here I'll say console log request comma request.body let's save and check what happens. Once again in the postman I'll click on send. Now you see there is no response. Let's check in the console as well. So here in the console the request body is undefined. That's because Express does not parse the request automatically but instead it has a built-in middleware which does the job. The term middleware might sound new to you but don't worry about it at this stage. We will have a detailed discussion on middleware and also on how to create our own middleware at a later stage. But just to give a glimpse of it, let me tell you that middleware as the name itself tells executes in the middle of something and that something is the request and response cycle. So to parse the incoming request we have to use the built-in middleware express.json. To use this middleware I will say app.use and inside the parentheses express.json method. Let's save this and execute this API again and I have the request body here. So this way we can send data in request and retrieve it in the API. Now let's talk about relative questions. The first question is can you use request.body in get request? Yes you can but as I said earlier it is not according to the RFC guidelines. The second question is when should we use the post requests? Basically when we want to send information to the server including some sensitive information we use a post request. In general if I say when we want to make some changes on the server or database like insert or update we use post requests. The next question how do you capture the request body in the post request? So using the request.body method as you can see in this piece of code you do get the access of the request body in post. The next question is is the request body directly accessible in the post request? Certainly not. To get the information from the request body we have to use the built-in middleware provided by Express.js that is Express.json we can also use third-party middleware like body parser as well. And the last question can we execute post requests from the browser? Well absolutely not we cannot we need a client to execute the post request. We can also use some fake clients or tools to test post requests like postman which we are using in our tutorial.